Across the entirety of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure so far, we know that nearly any living creature can possess a stand power. One example of this is Iggy, the rude and initially selfish street dog who joins the Stardust Crusaders halfway into their journey. This unpleasant pooch eventually warms up to the Crusaders, putting in the effort to help defend the other group members, as well as assisting with the assault on Dio's mansion with his stand, The Fool. Welcome back to my Stand Analysis series, where I delve deep into as much detail about the ins and outs of a stand as possible. My aim is to eventually do an analysis on every stand within the main anime and manga series, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I hope you will continue to follow me on this unique and educational adventure. As usual, please be aware of spoilers if you've not yet read or watched Part 3 Stardust Crusaders. Being brought up by a rich man, Iggy eventually began believing that humans were nothing but stupid creatures. This revelation caused him to run away from his rich owner, eventually becoming the king of stray dogs on the streets of New York. Using his stand The Fool, Iggy commanded the other street dogs before being found by Avdol and taken to the Speedwagon Foundation against his will. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, then please consider doing so, otherwise Iggy might just get mad and fart on your face. Many people who have seen The Fool in either the manga or anime recognise Iggy's stand as an artificial non-humanoid stand which takes the form of a mechanical quadruped animal, similar to that of a dog. This form has two big car wheels replacing its hind legs and has a body which looks as if it is covered in steel similar to that of a car's chassis. The front legs have cables going up from its mechanical paws towards the main body, and they are probably based on cables found within a car to match the rest of the theme of the stand. The face resembles an angry tribal mask which has eight feathers protruding out of its head. Like I said before, that is the form that most people will know this stand to take. However, its true form does not manifest any particular appearance. The Fool could be classed as a stand which grants the user a supernatural ability, with the stand itself being essentially formless. I'll get more in depth about this phenomenon later on during the techniques portion of the video. The Fool's name comes from the major arcana tarot card of the same name, The Fool, which is sometimes classed as the first card at number 0 and other times is named the last card at number 22. The Fool tarot card can represent vanity, innocence and spontaneity. This could be reflected by Iggy being a vain individual whilst existing as an innocent Boston Terrier. Animals are the most innocent creatures on this planet, and I think that's perhaps what Araki wanted to convey by giving Iggy the Fool card. When in its mechanical mammalian form, it growls angrily at the enemy, similar to that of a dog. Other than that, the fool has no distinct personality following Iggy's will completely and loyally. And now I'll explain what I meant earlier about the fool being mainly a formless stand that grants Iggy a supernatural ability. The technique that the fool grants Iggy is sand manipulation. Being completely formless most of the time, this stand grants Iggy the ability to control sand and dust particles in the nearby area. The fool essentially binds itself to the sand and dust, acting the same as a bound stand. I've seen people get a bit confused with bound stands, so this is essentially what they are. It's a stand power that binds itself to an everyday object or person. Take strength for example. Strength takes the form of a giant ship that non-stand users can see, yet at the end of the strength arc when Forever is defeated, the stand power disappears and we see that the ship was nothing more than a rowboat. Forever's stand ability was bound to the boat and was able to change its form. Because the rowboat is an everyday object that regular humans can see, this means that they can still see the object no matter what form it takes. In the same vein, dust and sand can be seen by regular humans, and once the fool binds to the sand and dust particles, regular people can still see it. This means that the fool is rather unique, being able to be seen by regular people in its mechanical mammalian form. After all, the sand and dust don't become a stand once the fool is bound to them. Now we've got that out of the way, let's continue. Once the stand binds itself to the sand and dust in the vicinity, Iggy can freely manipulate it however he wants. One thing he can do is meld the particles together to create other forms, such as the form most of us know it as. It can also take the form of other people, such as when it took the form of Dio to try and trick Vanilla Ice. This sand clone was able to mimic Dio perfectly, however if the clone is damaged, sand or dust will pile out of it instead of blood, revealing its true form. Iggy can manipulate this sand and dust to its core, even being able to completely change its colour, texture and density, as well as being able to make it completely water resistant, keeping it intact during battle. 
These sand and dust particles can also be manipulated to be as hard as rock by the use of the paranormal ability of the Fool, allowing Iggy to create barriers of sand and dust to protect himself or others. These barriers can still be broken through if enough force is used. It also appears that Iggy can use his stand power to manifest sand out of thin air if not enough sand or dust are in the surrounding area. If Iggy manifests sand out of thin air using his stand ability, this sand would act like a regular stand and not be able to be seen by non-stand users. Otherwise, it would act nearly the same as if it was bound to real sand. Although I theorise that it may not have as much scope to be manipulated compared to real sand, hence why he favours using real sand and dust he finds in the environment. This is especially helpful when he is added to the team in Egypt due to there being almost an indiscernible amount of sand across the country. Now I'm going to take a risk and delve even further into the usage of the Fool's sand and dust manipulation abilities. Grains of sand can be as small as 0.05mm, but can go up to the approximate size of 2mm. This is incredibly small compared to a human being. They are particles, which are minuscule pieces of rock and minerals. From what I've gathered, it's more realistic to say that Iggy is able to control particles in the surrounding area, rather than limiting it to just sand and dust. I do believe though that the Fool has a limit, and cannot manipulate particles that are too small. This means that subatomic particles most likely cannot be manipulated, as well as atoms, as this would be simply too overpowered. Maybe if the Fool got pierced by the Requiem Stand Arrow, we might be saying otherwise. One of the more confusing abilities is when Iggy and Polnareff were able to hide within the sand on the staircase of Dio's mansion, as if they were hiding within the stone steps themselves. Now, I have two theories on this one, and the first one may be a bit of a stretch, but I'm going to say it anyway. The first theory is, because Iggy can fully manipulate sand in seemingly any way possible, I feel like he was able to hide Polnareff and himself within the stairs by creating an empty, hollow space inside the sand itself, being big enough for both Iggy and Polnareff to fully conceal themselves in. They were able to poke their heads out of the sand and then fully emerge to continue the fight. This theory is that Iggy is able to manipulate the space within the sand itself, making it possible for him to create a small pocket dimension within the grains, able to hide people or objects within. This pocket dimension will most likely take a toll on Iggy's spiritual energy however, as he is not seen using this ability again, nor did they stay hidden within the sand for long. If the pocket dimension theory is a bit of a stretch, then we move on to my second theory. I mentioned before that grains of sand are minuscule pieces of rock and minerals, and this is proof that Iggy can in fact manipulate rocks and minerals. My second theory is that Iggy may have simply just controlled the stone steps to create a hollow space within them to hide the duo, because the stone steps were made of rock. I feel like this theory is more likely, but I do like the previous theory that Iggy can manipulate the space within the sand to create a pocket dimension. Now let's talk about the various strengths and weaknesses to this stand. The biggest strength that the Fool holds is that Iggy uses it to bind it to regular sand and dust, and these particles are not technically a part of the stand itself, meaning that any damage done to the sand or dust particles is technically not successful damage done to the stand. This results in Iggy taking no damage when the form that the sand takes is attacked or destroyed. He can only take damage if he has manifested the sand himself, or if his main body is damaged. Usually though, he tends to use the particles in the immediate area if it is available, as it is a much more safe method compared to manifesting the sand himself. Iggy is also very small and fast, being able to easily evade attacks and to also make quick swift assaults on enemies. Dust usually consists of particles that have come from various resources such as soil being lifted up by the wind and being blown through the atmosphere. Soil can be made up of various minerals such as clay, silt, sand and stone, all of which have the capabilities to be controlled by the powers of the Fool due to them being particles of various rocks and minerals. This dust can be found in the atmosphere in general, as well as in most homes and buildings, which allows Iggy to use his stand within Dio's mansion as well as nearly any area on Earth regardless if there is sand nearby. The particles manipulated by the Fool are small enough to fit within tiny cracks and holes. However, since the particles themselves are not always a part of Iggy's stand, he cannot see or sense what the particles are near. If this sand or dust was manipulated by Iggy for recon purposes, he would probably not be able to actually see or sense what the stand would see. Since Iggy is a small animal, he does not have the physical strength or capabilities of that of a human, making him physically weaker and more susceptible to damage. 
My final thoughts on The Fool are that I used to find this stand quite bland, but when I got around to researching it for this video, it made me realise that there is a lot more to it than just, Iggy can create a car dog from sand. I thoroughly enjoyed researching for this stand analysis video, even if my search history is looking pretty strange right now. I would have loved to have seen more of Iggy throughout part 3, however, being such a late addition to the team, I didn't really get to bond with him as much as the rest of the crew. Though I do really like the design of his stand, researching what I did for the stand analysis made me like the stand even more, I think. It's a right shame that Iggy didn't make it past the fight with Vanilla Ice, however, he had a realisation that having bonds with humans isn't as stupid as he first thought. This created some incredibly heartwarming and touching scenes between him and Polnareff in the fight with Vanilla Ice, which made seeing Iggy get kicked to death even more heart-wrenching. That about does it for this stand analysis video on The Fool. Since this is a personal analysis of the stand, not every specific part of this video has ever really been confirmed by Araki. He leaves a lot of aspects of the stand up to fans' interpretation and imagination. So if I missed anything or you think I scraped the barrel a bit too much, just remember that Araki doesn't actually confirm every aspect of the stands. What did you personally think of Iggy and the Fool? Do you think his stand could manipulate subatomic particles and atoms with enough training? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video then please consider subscribing to the channel for future JoJo content. Also please hit the like button in this video if you'd like to see more stand analysis videos. To get notified when I release the next video, hit that bell and you'll be notified when I release another one. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, but until next time, Bizarre Star Platinum, out.